Hi. Today we're looking at one of the lessons from A Golden Key. That's a pamphlet or writing that's available from Unity. And if you want a copy of it for yourself and you don't have one, look up A Golden Key PDF and you can download it and have it on your computer free of charge. So I want to talk about one of the very first paragraphs in this writing. I find it so powerful. And power is kind of the, the lesson. The first line says, God is omnipotent, and man is his image and likeness, and has dominion over all things. That's a pretty powerful statement, isn't it? Even if we just stopped right there and meditated on that, what is omnipotent? And how is man the representation, the likeness of omnipotence? It's really a lot to think about, isn't it? Sometimes it helps if we go word by word and just consider the word God. What does that mean to you? God is, not was, not will be, but is. God is, that's here and now, omnipotent. 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 Wow. Everything. All power. All power. And man, and of course by man we mean mankind, and that includes all people, is his, and there's some controversy over whether or not God is his, but if we're looking at power, that's generally considered a masculine. So for this writing we'll go with man is his, with a capital H, meaning God, image, and likeness. That one has really meant a lot to me while learning about the Bible and doing the studies on my path to ministerial school. We keep learning that man, mankind, is created in the image of God. But it's pretty evident when you look back through the history that Mankind keeps portraying God and inventing God to the best of its ability to understand God. And as we grow in consciousness, in, in being, in love, in light, our understanding of God grows as well. No longer are we likely to visualize God as some old guy sitting on a cloud. Now our visualization includes so much more God. God was never a man, but is all men. God. And we are created in the likeness of God. Has dominion, power, control, over all things. Wow, that's another really powerful statement, isn't it? How often do we feel like we don't have a say, we don't have a control, that we're the victim, that we have to do what everybody tells us to do? Right here, right now, we know that we have dominion and that on some level we are choosing to allow the situations we feel control us to have that control. We can take our power back. We are created in the image and likeness of God. Omnipotence. Omnipowerful. The next line says, This is the inspired teaching and it is intended to be taken literally at face value. Well, that's what we've been doing. That's what we're talking about. What if we took it 
literally. There are so many words that we say by rote and don't really sit with, meditate on, empower the words, the images that they represent. So knowing we're going to take this literally, I'm going to read that first sentence one more time, straight through. God is omnipotent, and man is his image and likeness, and has dominion over all things. What a powerful statement. What a powerful idea. And as you consider that, I would love for you to consider Where are you going to stand in your dominion? Where are you going to express your likeness of God? Sometimes we're the only image of God that the people around us have. They don't read their Bibles. They don't pray. They don't meditate. They get so trapped in fear, they don't see God anywhere, let alone everywhere. But we, by expressing that kindness, that love, that compassion, and sharing our faith and our being, can bring to life and to light in each and every person the knowing that God is here, more powerful than anything else that there is. God is omnipotent. What a beautiful message. And it's true. It's absolutely true. So the next sentence is, man means every man. And so the ability to draw on this power is not the special prerogative of the mystic or the saint, as is often supposed, or even of the highly trained practitioner. How often do we tune in to the Dalai Lama or read the the Sanskrit words or study Buddha's wisdom and think, wow, yeah, they were tuned in. They had the power. They had the opportunity. Man, I really hear God when I think of them. How often do we let that be? When the truth is that awareness, that knowing, is absolutely available to you and me. We don't have to be practitioners. We don't have to have worshipers. We have that same knowing. The next part says, Whoever you are, wherever you may be, the golden key to harmony is in your hand now. You already have it. This is because in scientific prayer, it is God who works and not you. And so your particular limitations or weaknesses are of no account in the process. You don't have to be perfect. Nobody ever expects you to be anything but what you are. You are the only channel through which the divine action takes place, and your treatment will really be just getting yourself out of the way. Step aside and let God express through you. Beginners often get startling results at the first time of trying. For all that is absolutely essential is to have an open mind and sufficient faith to try the experiment. Apart from that, you may hold any views on religion or none at all. Pretty powerful stuff. So what we're learning as we explore the lessons in the Golden Key is that we are already perfect, that God is already a part of us. It doesn't matter if we're in church every week, if we pray and meditate for hours every single day, if we don't pray at all, 
God does not need our affirmations, our worship, our devotion. God is unchanging, ever-present, omnipotent, ever-powerful. And the more we know that, the more we embrace that, the more we express that, the more connected we are. And I think it's up to all of us right here, right now, to step forward, to stand up, to let God be and express through us, to us, and for us. Thank you for joining me in this, the first lesson from the Golden Key. God bless you. still and know that the Lord is in control. Be still, my soul. Stand and watch as giants fall. I won't be afraid Cause you are here You silence all my fear I won't be afraid You don't let go Be still my heart and know I won't be afraid Be still and trust what the Lord has said and done. Find rest, don't strive. Watch as faith and grace align. I won't be afraid. You are here, you silence all my fear, I won't be afraid, you don't let go, be still my heart and know, I won't be afraid. won't be afraid surely love and mercy your peace and kindness will follow me will follow me surely love and mercy your peace and kindness will follow me will follow me surely love and mercy your peace and kindness will follow me will follow me surely love and mercy your peace and kindness will follow me will follow me won't be afraid cause you're here you silence all my fear I won't be afraid you don't let go be still my heart and know I won't be afraid be 
still and know that the Lord is in control. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Jody. Linda started off by talking about the Golden Key. This is one of the pamphlets that you can get from Unity Worldwide. It talks about the Golden Key. It has a lot of great information in there. The Golden Key I wanted to go into a little bit deeper. It's actually a method of when something is bothering you, whether it's big or little, uh, finances, um, lawsuits, quarrels, accidents, whatever it is. What you want to do is, what we want to do, is change our mind, focus, change our focus to God instead of the problem. So when something comes, comes up and pops in, we think, hmm, okay, we can think about this or we can think about God. And just that little shift, very simple, changes a lot of things in our lives. It says in here that God himself could scarcely make it any simpler. So let's take a few moments and go into meditation, thinking about changing our mind and turning into God, turning it to God instead of on what's going on in our lives. Please join me. Get comfortable as we get connected with spirit. Breathe in, breathe out, and relax. As we remember the golden key, in our imagination, we see its simplicity. If any time this week, you find yourself agitated, unrestful, bothered by anyone or anything, remember, you have the golden key. It is available to you always. As you continue to be relaxed, breathing in and out, just remember you can stop thinking about the difficulty, whatever it is, and think about God instead. This is the complete rule. To ensure the troubles go away, whatever they are, turn to God. It doesn't make a difference if it's big or small, or car passing you on the road, or having to wait in a line. Take those thoughts, let them go, and replace them with your thoughts of God. Very simple to think about God. It's very simple. Think about God, whatever it is. Stop and change your thoughts. God is bigger than anything else. Believe this will always work if you continue to remember the golden key, God. Breathing in, releasing everything else. Rest in your oneness with God, knowing in His presence all is well with your soul. Take another breath in. As you begin to return to this time and place, bring with you the knowledge that you have the golden key. God with you, God always within you. One more breath, you feel rested and reassured all is well. Opening your eyes now, you're ready. Thank you for joining us and get your golden key from Unity Worldwide. We hope that you will join us tomorrow for the Coffee Time Conversations. Namaste. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, 
Search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.